Okay, this one is called Do It Yourself Kangaroo Courts number 19, a Republican Form of Government. This is kind of like what hopefully might be a silver bullet for a lot of people. First of all, I'm not a liar. Well, I'm not a lawyer. No, I'm not a liar. You should never take my word for anything. You should always do your own research. I provided references to aid you in your research. So I don't know everything, and I'm open to any ideas. There's four types of people you'll meet in your life. There's the people who try to wake up the slaves. There's the slave masters. There's the people who have no idea they're slaves. And there's the people who like being slaves. Which one are you? Do you really know for sure? Are you who you think you are? If you can see through the illusion, then you are the solution. If people do not know their basic rights and freedoms, how can they know if or when their rights and freedoms are being infringed? Never forget the men who started this country were marijuana growing, whiskey drinking, tax evading rebels who left their beds at night to shoot at the pigs. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. So, um, first of all, you got to understand that we're under a military occupation. Okay, we have military government, government, yep, under the Libra Code. And uh, the Libra Code is instructions for the government of the armies of the United States in the field. It was prepared by Francis Lieber, promulgated as General Orders Number 100 by President Lincoln, uh, 24th of April, 1863. It was originally issued as General Orders Number 100 under the Adjutant General's Office in 1863, Washington, 1898, uh, Government Printing Office. Under Article 1 of the Libra Code, it says a place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army, whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. So, um, first of all, Martial law can come by, like all the southern states, um, all of the states uh, uh, obtained by the Treaty of Hidalgo, um, um, just about all of the states that the U.S. has that was territorial is under martial law, okay, other than the 13 original 13 colonies and uh, are under martial law. And those 13 colonies or 13 states, um, could be put under martial law by the bankruptcies. Anyways, martial law does not cease during a hostile occupation except by special proclamation ordered by the commander-in-chief or by special mention in the Treaty of Peace concluding the war when the occupation. So then uh, the point being is, is that I have never seen any special proclamations or any special mentions in a Treaty of Peace. Uh, a good example is uh, Arizona is under a military occupation because of the war with Mexico in the 1840s. And there is a Treaty of Hidalgo, but the he Treaty of Hidalgo says nothing about ending the um, uh, martial law. And so martial law continues. Martial law in a hostile country consists of a suspension by the occupying military authority of the criminal and civil law and of the domestic administration and government in the occupied place or territory and the substitution of military rule and force as well as the dictation okay it's dictatorship military necessity requires the suspension substitution or dictation it's a military dictatorship the commander of the forces may proclaim that the administration of all civil and penal law shall continue either wholly or in part as in times of peace unless otherwise ordered by the military authority it's all at the pleasure of the military commander don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. Don't forget to like this video. On YouTube, don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified when there's a new upload. On Steemit, don't forget to vote and make your comments. That's the front page of my channel. Uh, the subscribe button's already been clicked because it's not red. And the bell hasn't been clicked because it doesn't look like it's vibrating. So you need to click the bell if you want to be notified of uploads. The thing about the martial law is that the, uh, they all have an oath of office, okay? And 
the um, oath of office says they will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And so the Constitution of the United States, Article 4, Section 4, says the United States shall guarantee to every state in the Union a Republican form of government, okay? And so that's, that's, that's our silver bullet, quite frankly, because they have to guarantee a Republican form of government. But we have to understand what a Republican form of government is. And a Republican form of government does not include a military dictatorship. This is taken from the causes and necessities uh, for taking up arms. Um, martial law supersedes and replaces common law. So a Republican form of government does not equal a military dictatorship. Statutes have been passed extending courts of admiralty and vice admiralty far beyond their ancient limits were depriving us of the custom and inestimable privilege of trial by jury in cases affecting both life and property to supersede the course of common law, instead thereof to publish nor the use and exercise of the law martial, and for altering fundamentally the form of government established by charter, we saw the misery to which such despotism would reduce us. Okay, that's a military dictatorship. That's not a, that's not a Republican form of government. There are no common law offenses against the United States, only those acts which Congress has forbidden with penalties for disobedience of its command or crimes. Um, and again, that's not a Republican form of government, okay? But the, the Constitution doesn't say that you're entitled to a federal republic. It says that the Constitution is guaranteed to guarantee every state in the Union a Republican form of government. So that's at the state level, okay? That's not the federal. And so, again, that's at the state level. So uh, when you're in the federal jurisdiction, it's not necessarily a republic, okay? I think that um, there's, there's still limits. It's actually the, the, the Constitution does establish a republic, and so the Constitution still, the federal government's got to be a republic too, so you could still, still talk about that. But the states, uh, this particular clause only talks about state governments. Under Texas law, no act or omission is a crime unless made so by statute. The legislature may create an offense and an enactment, provide exceptions to its application. Okay, so that's still not a Republican form of government. Okay, a republic is of the people, by the people, and for the people. All common law offenses and affirmative defenses are abolished. No conduct or omission constitutes an affirmative or uh, an offense or affirmative defense unless. So what they're telling you is that these statutes are not for a Republican form of government. Think about it. Under Article 13 of the Libra Code, military jurisdiction is two kinds, that which is conferred and be defined by statute. Okay, so again, statutes are for the martial law. Second, that which is derived by the common law of war. Military offenses under the statute law must be tried in the manner therein directed, but military offenses which do not come within the statute must be tried and punished under the common law of war. The character of the courts which exercise these jurisdictions depends upon the local laws of each particular country. In the armies of the United States, the first is exercised by court-martial, which cases do, uh, which would do not come within the rules and articles of war, or the jurisdiction conferred by statute on court-martial, which are tried by military commissions. Okay, So again, all statutes are for martial law. And so that's not a Republican form of government. Martial law is not a Republican form of government. All statutes are in support of the martial law. All statutes apply to subjects only. There's two kinds of court proceedings, court martial and military commissions. The only Article Three courts are set up by we the people. And this is taken from the uh, uh, Field Manual 27-5, United States Army and Navy Manual on Civil Affairs, 1947, Section 2, Civil Affairs, Military Government, Responsibilities and Function, Establishment of Courts and Administration of Law. And then it starts off, Civil Affairs, Military Government, Personnel are charged with the following, Establishment and Administration of Military Commissions, Provost Courts, and Special Military Government Courts in their Jurisdiction and Procedure, Supervision, control, or closing, if necessary, of local criminal and civil courts. Supervision of members of the local bar. That means all bar members are 
under military, under martial law. Decisions as to modifications or suspension of local criminal and civil laws and general legal advice and assistance on all aspects of the occupation. So again, um, that's, that's, that's in 1947. The Republican form of government does not equal star chambers. Okay, people tell me that they're being forced to have a lawyer. Well, that's a star chamber. The corrupt star chamber courts of England required defendants to have counsel. Star chamber stood for swiftness and arbitrary power. It's a limits, limitation on the common law. And that's U.S. Supreme Court, Ferretta versus California. A Republican form of government doesn't equal a star chamber. Legislative courts are not judicial. Legislative courts are not Article Three courts. Legislative courts give advisory decisions only, do not have the force of law. Executive, administrative, executive board, or legislative courts are incapable of receiving authority to be an Article Three court. Only an Article Three court has the force of law. And that's a Republican form of government does not equal a military dictatorship, okay? And that's all, all of that stuff is military dictatorship. A republic is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. A republic has only Article Three courts, okay? So you got to understand what's happening and how it's happening and so that you can basically uh, force them to be a republican form of government. So, there, uh, uh, Judge, uh, you're telling me you intend to perjure your oath then, is that correct? And uh, then he's going to say, why? Well, uh, under Article 4, Section 4, I'm entitled to a republican form of government. And that doesn't include a military commissioner under the Libra Code. That doesn't include your uh, military statutes under martial law. And you just kind of go from there. A Republican form of government does not include international law. Okay, Unidroit is private international law. Unidroit is the Uniform Commercial Code. Okay, they all operate under the Uniform Commercial Code. And a Republican form of government does not include international law. And here's the membership of the Unidroit Treaty. And this is uh, Canada, uh, and, and it goes on, United States has been a member of the Unidroit uh, uh, for 30 years. 63 countries. This is only a few. Whenever the Republican form of government does not include the Uniform Commercial Code. Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to fact or provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports a finding of its non-existence. Okay, a Republican form of government does not include a Uniform Commercial Code or any presumptions taken under the Uniform Commercial Code. And so, it's the Uniform Commercial Code that they forge your signature onto a contract and sell you into slavery. And that's, um, you know, I'm not even going to read that stuff, but you can pause it and read it if you want. It's just in the Uniform Commercial Code that talks about how they uh, presume that it's presumed that the signatures are authentic. In the sense of public international law, the several states of the Union are neither foreign to the United States nor are they foreign to each other. But such is not the case in the field of private international law. That's private international law is the Uniform Commercial Code. The United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state in the Union. International law rule. Adopted for areas of federal legislative jurisdiction, federalizes state civil law, including common law. The rule serves to federalize not only statutory, but the common law of a state. State and federal venue discussed. If they're talking international law rule, then, then it's not a Republican form of government. State and federal venue discussed. Civil laws effective in an area of exclusive federal jurisdiction are federal law, notwithstanding their derivation from state laws, and a cause arising under such laws may be brought in or removed to a federal district court under sections 24 or 28 of the former Judicial Code, now sections 1331 and 1441 of Title 28, United States Code, giving jurisdiction to such courts of civil actions arising under the laws of the United States. Jurisdiction, and this is taken from... Uh, Jurisdiction over federal areas within the states. Report for the Interdepartmental Inter Committee on the Study of Jurisdiction over Federal Areas Within the States. Part 2, a text of the Law of Legislative Jurisdiction submitted to the Journey Attorney General and transmitted to the President June 1957. And that's uh, taken from pages 158 through 165. 
We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. To ho we hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states are not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington, District of Columbia, and through their plenary power nationally covers those citizens, even when in one of the several states, as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. So that's all talking about international law. National Mutual Insurance Company of the District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company, U.S. Supreme Court, 1948. The term special maritime territorial jurisdiction as used in this title, okay, uh, maritime and territorial jurisdiction is international law. The high seas or any waters and admiralty maritime jurisdiction in the United States and out of the jurisdiction of any particular state and any vessel belonging in whole or part to the United States or any citizen thereof or any corporation creator by or under the laws of the United States or any state, territory, district or possession thereof when such vessel is within the Admiralty and Maritime Jurisdiction of the United States and out of the jurisdiction of any particular state. And that's 18 U.S.C. Section 7, Special Maritime Territory of Jurisdiction of the United States defined. And this is uh, uh, Propeller Genesee Chief et al. versus uh, Fitzhugh at 12 Howard, 443, uh, U.S. Supreme Court, 1851. And it may embrace also the vehicles and persons carrying on, uh, engaged in carrying it on, it would be in the power of Congress to confer admiralty jurisdiction upon its courts over the cars engaged in transporting passengers or merchandise from one state to another and over the persons engaged in conducting them and deny to the parties the trial by jury. Okay, so again, that's commerce. That's carrying passengers or property for hire. Martial law is the law of nations, international law, admiralty maritime law is martial law. Fifth, the Constitution has undoubtedly conferred on Congress the right to create such municipal organizations as it may deem best for all the territories of the United States, whether they be incorporated or not, to give the inhabitants as respect the local government uh, such degree of representation as may be conducive to the public well-being to deprive such territory of representative government is if it is considered just to do so and to change such local government at its discretion. Okay, and so that comes down to, that's, that's, that's territorial, okay? That's territories, federal territories, international law. There's been created a fictional federal state of XXX within a state. That's a summary of the Swartz versus O'Hara Township School District, which cites uh, a Supreme Court case, uh, Howard versus Sinking Fund of Louisville. And, uh, and there's another summary from uh, uh, Downs versus Bidwell, 1901, two national governments exist, one to be maintained under the Constitution with its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument. Oh, look, Indiana and Company, 3,460,000 stockholders engaged in providing peace, justice, security, opportunity, health, highways, education, conservation, recreation. Every Indiana citizen is a stockholder in 4,300 school buildings, 960 miles of highways, it's probably more than that now, 34 state parks and memorials, 19 state universities, oh no, 19 state institutions, four colleges and universities, state library, state fair, and is entitled to services rendered by all state departments such as police, courts, health, and I'm kind of hard to read the rest of that. Uh, this uh, certifies that every Indiana citizen is a owner of a full share of the capital stock of Indiana and company. The report for the fiscal year depending, uh, beginning July 1st, 1936 and ending June 30th, 1937, prepared by the Indiana Gross Income Tax Division. Well, so the question I have is, uh, you think every Indiana citizen is still a shareholder? I doubt it. I think it's been gone bankrupt and it's now owned and operated by the bankster thieves, the creditors. You think that's only just there? It's happening all over the place. The judiciary courts of the state of Texas is a subsidiary state of Texas, Inc. 
as found in the affidavit of Daniel Lee Swank, as, which is recorded with the Liberty County Recorder at recording 20080105222, which has attached a Dun & Bradstreet listing for the Judiciary Courts of the State of Texas. Year started 1845, headquarter location, Supreme Court Building, Austin, Texas, 78701. Top Executive, Thomas R. Phillips, Chief Justice, Business Type, Corporation, For Profit. And on page two, it shows as noted, this company is a subsidiary of Texas State of Inc. State Court System, which includes the Supreme Court, the Court of Criminal Appeals, Courts of Last Resort, 14 Courts of Appeals, with 80 judges, District Court with 386 judges, Criminal District Court with 10 judges, and County Level Court with 445 judges. Oh, look, this looks like the actual recording. And notice here, it says State of Texas. It doesn't say the State of Texas is required by the Texas Constitution. It just says State of Texas. And here, it says State of Texas. And so, uh, let's, let's go on here. Oh, look at this. Notary Public, State of Texas. It's not the State of Texas. Oh, look. Judiciary Courts of the State of Texas, subsidiary of Texas State of Austin. Supreme Court building, years started 1845, a line of business state court system. It's a for-profit corporation. Oh, and here's more. As noted, this company is a subsidiary of Texas State of Inc., State court system, which includes Supreme Court and Court of Criminal Appeals, Courts of Last Resort, 14 Courts of Appeals with 80 judges, District Courts with 386 judges, Criminal District Court with 10 judges, County Level Courts with 445 judges. The department maintains 14 Courts of Appeals, 375 District Level Courts, and 420 County Level Courts. And here is Liberty County clerk official records oh look at that the certification state of texas county of liberty okay it's not the state of texas it is just state of texas and you're going to see in a few minutes why that's significant my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com my website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi my email address is engineerwin at yahoo.com my YouTube profile, Sovereign Living. My Facebook community page has been deleted due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group, Sovereignty International, is being deleted. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants, and my Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Now, Yahoo has uh, deleted the files directory, so we started another group called Administering Your Public Servant at groups.io, and there's a files directory there. So. Um, we can, uh, and we're starting to move everybody over to this uh, administering of public servants at groups.io. The files directory there is, is actually, they give us a gigabyte of space. And so um, they, we have more space than we did at Yahoo. Follow me on Twitter at Engineer Win. Follow me on Steemit at Sovereignty International. I've got a BitChute profile, but I don't have all my videos there because they don't let me up do, upload videos um, uh, uh, more than half a gig. And I've also got a Patreon uh, channel at Sovereignty International. And I appreciate all my Patreons. Um, don't think I don't appreciate you because I do. A Republican form of government does not equal international law. And this is Texas Tax Code. Remember, all state statutes are edicts under martial law. And martial law is under international law. In this state min means within the exterior limits of Texas and includes all territory within these limits ceded to or owned by the United States, which means in this state is only all territory ceded to or owned by the United States. All of these unconstitutional corporations are set up under the law of nations. This is uh, state statutes. Uh, the um, includes is limiting. Okay, so if you go back here, it says it includes all territory. It means it's only all territory ceded to or owned by the United States. As uh, U.S. Supreme Court, uh, Montello versus Montello Salt versus Utah, 
uh, include or the participial form thereof is defined to comprise within, to hold, to contain, enclose, comprise, comprehend, embrace, involve. It's limiting. Under uh, um, American Dictionary of English, Noel Webster, 1828, uh, include, it's to confine within, to hold, to contain, as a shell of a nut, includes a kernel, a pearl, includes in a shell, to comprise, to comprehend, to contain. Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, include, is to shut in, to keep within, to confine within, to hold as an enclosure to take in, to attain, to shut up, so it's only what's there. The owner of a motor vehicle registered in this state, well, that's all federal areas of Texas. So the motor vehicle is, is only in federal areas of Texas. A person other than a person expressly exempted under this chapter may not operate a motor vehicle on a highway in federal areas of Texas. That's Texas Transportation Code license required. A person may not operate a motor vehicle in this state without financial responsibility. That's Texas Transportation Code Retirement of re Financial Responsibility. That's federal areas of Texas. So a Republican form of government does not equal affect Texas territory. A motor vehicle. Pole trader uh, registered in the state must have an inspection. That's Texas Transportation Code, vehicle and equipment subject to inspection. It's only in, in federal areas of Texas. A municipal court judge is only in federal areas of Texas. Texas Government Code. An assistant prosecutor is only in federal areas of Texas. A judge. Texas Government Code is only in federal areas of Texas. The Board of Law Examiners is only in federal areas of Texas. The Republican form of government does not equal Texas territory. Remember, you have to force the issue. So there, Judge, are you, uh, you're telling me that you intend to purge your oath. Is that correct? I just want to get that clear in my head. So there, Mr. Police Officer, you're telling me that you intend to perjure your oath. Is that correct? I just want to get that clear in my head. You intend to subject me to the deprivation of my Fifth Amendment right to fail to give evidence against myself. You intend to subject me to my to the uh, uh, deprivation of my Fourth Amendment right to be secure my, uh, against unreasonable searches and seizures. Is that correct? You intend to uh, subject me to the deprivation of my right to uh, have business to have consumer goods instead of business equipment is that correct and and you and your boss here standing here intend to conspire together to subject me to threaten me intimidate me and coerce me and oppress me in the free exercise of my right to have consumer goods instead of business equipment is that correct all real uh, property uh, that can be taxed, can only be taxed in the federal areas of Texas. A law enforcement agency is only in federal areas of Texas. A warrant of arrest is only in federal areas of Texas. A search warrant is only in federal areas of Texas. Title IV United States Code talks about the state's official territorial papers uh, for federal areas of Texas, that's territorial. Oath of members of the legislature, that's federal areas of Texas. Check out my subscription uh, Patreon channels. I have exclusive content available on my website and on Patreon. My website has two subscription levels and I accept cryptocurrencies. My basic subscription level is $29.99 a year for the videos only. My uh, 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 platinum subscription level is $49.99 a year for the videos plus unlimited consultations but uh, my unlimited consultations do have limits because I'm not a liar well I meant an attorney no I meant a liar but I can tell you what I would do under certain circumstances and where to find the forms but you have to understand that uh, so if you want to uh, uh, the only power that these new world order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception and my agenda is to expose it for all our benefit, but I cannot fight all the battles. 
So if you want to make a donation or buy a subscription just as a donation, it's a modest donation, there's no doubt about it. But a whole bunch of people chipping in a little bit adds up pretty fast and it's all appreciated. I'm currently publishing one video a week. Um, actually, I'm actually trying to do more than a video a week, but uh, it kind of varies. Some of my exclusive content is an Arlington Private Information Share. I've got a couple or three land deed training videos, estoppel certificates training, foreclosure estoppel certificates training, corporate denial training, toll road notice and demand training, invoice training, notice of void judgment training, revocation of signature training, third party witness training, federal habeas corpus training. Um, revocation of voter registration training, criminal complaint training, I've got two or three of those. Lawsuit training, I got one of those, a beginning one. Other training requests, I have a Northeast Private Information Share videos. All forms, files, and other instructions are available for free on my private groups at Yahoo Groups, Google Groups, and Groups.io. And all exclusive content is available on my website, and you can buy a subscription there. I also have a Patreon uh, channel, and you can buy a subscription there as well. So uh, a Republican form of government does not equal the territories. All hospitals and health care is in the territories. All financial institutions is in the territories. All labor organizations are in the territories. All law enforcement agencies are in the territories. All government agencies, cities, courts, counties, municipal corporations are in the territories. All taxes are federal. All officers of their so-called courts are U.S. citizens. They're demanding Federal Reserve notes. All their LEOs are U.S. citizens. A Republican form of government does not include U.S. citizens in Texas. As used in this act, the term United States means the government of the United States. The term currency of the United States means currency, which is legal tender in the United States and includes United States notes and Federal Reserve notes. And that's the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 at 48 Stat 337. So again, a Republican form of government does not include Federal Reserve notes, which is legal tender. The forced loans of 1862 and 1863 in the form of legal tender notes were vital forces in the struggle for national supremacy. That's not a Republican form of government. They form a part of the public debt of the United States, the validity of which is established by the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. The 14th Amendment is not for the Republic, it's for the military dictatorship. Under the international law of warfare, all parties to a cause must appear by nom de guerre because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during a war in his own name. A Republican form of government does not equal perpetual warfare. A Republican form of government does not equal international law. A mixed war is one made on one side by public authority and the other by mere private persons. A Republican form of government does not equal commercial warfare. The president, if he shall find it compatible with the safety of the United States and the successful prosecution of the war, Okay, that's the Trading with the Enemy Act. Okay, that's not a Republican form of government. The exclusive jurisdiction of the United States having forts and dockyards ceded to them is derived from the express assent of the states of whom the sessions are made. It could be derived in no other manner because without it, the authority of the state would be supreme and exclusive therein. U.S. Supreme Court, uh, U.S. versus Bevins. Now, <clears throat> A Republican form of government does equal federal enclaves, okay? It does equal federal enclaves. A Republican form of government does equal federal enclaves. It's well-established principle of law that all federal regulation applies only within the territorial jurisdiction of the United States. That's Foley Brothers versus Florida, U.S. Supreme Court again. There is a canon of legislative construction which teaches Congress that unless a contrary intent appears, legislation is meant to apply only within the territorial jurisdiction of the United States. U.S. versus Spilar, um, U.S. Supreme Court again, a federal a Republican form of government does include federal enclaves. The United States is located in the District of Columbia. And, and again, the, uh, the Uniform Commercial Code is international law and 
That is not a Republican form of government. Check out my other videos, Bankster Thieves Playlist, Roman Cult Playlist, Roman Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 through 4, Do It Yourself, How Not to Volunteer for the Selective Service in the Draft, <coughs> Martial Laws Here, Do It Yourself, No Income Tax, Do It Yourself, Free Mail, Do It Yourself, Kangaroo Courts 1 through 19, <coughs> Canada Bor Border Pigs Playlist, Bar Members and Their Satanic Connections Playlist. So a Republican form of government does equal state citizens. State citizens are a free inhabitant. Federal citizens are not a Republican form of government. You can be a state citizen without being a U.S. citizen. Watch the Do You Know Who You Are video. If any citizen or resident of the United States does not reside in, is not found in any United States federal ju uh, judicial district, such citizen or resident, shall be treated as residing in the District of Columbia for purposes of any provision of this title to A, jurisdiction of the courts, or B, enforcement of the summons. And that's uh, where, um, uh, that's 26 U.S.C. 7701-39 or uh, 7408-C, depending on which version of the code you're looking at. Okay, a Republican form of government does not equal federal employees. And... The term federal personnel means individuals entitled to receive immediate or deferred retirement benefits under any retirement program of the government of the United States, including survivor benefits. That means federal personnel is anybody with a social security number. U.S. Code Title V, government employees, government organizations, and employees. A Republican form of government does not equal U.S. citizens. The term citizen, United States, is analogous to the term subject in the common law. Residents, as distinguished from citizens, are aliens who are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country, being bound to the society by their reason of dwelling in it. They are subject to its law so long as they remain there, and being protected by it, they must defend it. See, this is all taken from the law of nations, okay? By Vitell, book one, okay? That is not a Republican form of government. That's international law. Every taxpayer is assessed a trust, having sufficient interest in preventing abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. That's a summary from Henry Bolins, okay? And a Republican form of government does not equal taxpayers. A uh, citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the constructive Sestake Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc., which is a summary taken from Congressional Record of five pages of the Congressional Record, June 13, 1967, okay? And again, a Republican form of government does not equal U.S. citizens. This is the Code of Law for the District of Columbia, which was approved March 3, 1901, by the 56th Congress at 31 Stat 1208, that in addition to the jurisdiction conferred in the preceding section, plenary jurisdiction is hereby given to said court to hold said term to hear and determine all questions relative to the execution of any and all wills, okay? That's for dead people. And, and they immediately say... Uh, in 31 Stat 1432, that the legal estate to be in assessed K use, which is a dead thing. And so, again, that's military dictatorship. A Republican form of government does not include a military dictatorship. An act established a code of law at the very beginning at uh, 31 Stat 1189. Be it further enacted that in an interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely the third, the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations, and the word executor is used shall include administrator and vice versa. And so, um, again, uh, you know, it's called the Trump administration, and so uh, that's, that's, that's all 1901. That's about the time they started calling it the Trump or the whatever administration back then but they call it an administration. A Republican form of government does not include U.S. citizens, which is a government employee or a SESTK trust, a fictitious entity. The only absolute and unqualified right to a U.S. United States citizen is the residence within the territory of boundaries of the United States. 
U.S. citizen has no rights. It's impossible to prove jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to a license. All jurisdictional facts supporting the claim that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. So what can we do? Well, first of all, get a copy of the judge's oath of office. Remind him that he's required to support and defend the federal constitution. Remind him that Article 4, Section 4 requires that you be provided with a Republican form of government. Remind him that a Republican form of government fails to include military commissioners under the Libra Code. And um, city, uh, city judges oaths are kept with the city secretary. State judges are kept with the secretary of state. Those are the ones that I know for sure. County judges, you know, I'm trying to get a hold of a county judge's oath, and um, so far the Secretary of State doesn't have it, and neither does the county clerk, so I'm wondering where the heck it is. Maybe he doesn't have one. The most important thing we can do is stop letting these Satanists divide us so they can conquer us. Most of these satanic statutes are for people who cannot voluntarily respect other people or their property. Our Constitution is made only for a moral and religious people is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams, men in a word must necessarily be controlled either by power within them or by power without them, either by the word of God or by the strong arm of man, either by the Bible or by the bayonet. And that's John Winthrop, I believe he was the first speaker of the U.S. House. So never give up, never ever give up. Privileges equal slavery. So you got to stay away from their privileges. If you want a Republican form of government, you cannot participate in their privileges. The rights of sovereignty extend to all persons and things not privileged that are within the territory. They extend to all strangers resident therein, not only to those who are naturalized and to those who are domiciled therein, having taken up their abode with the intention of permanent residence, but also to those whose residence is transitory. All strangers are under the protection of the sovereign while they're within his territory and owe a temporary allegiance in, in return for that protection. U.S. Supreme Court, 1873. So a motor vehicle is, a, is a, a, a vehicle which is registered, okay? When you register it with the state, then they can presume that you're involved for, in commerce. And uh, so that's under the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 at Public Law 89-719 at 80 Stat 1130 and 1131. And so then all the rest of the words in here are commercial. Security, the term security means any bond, dementia, note, certificate, or other evidence of indebtedness issued by a corporation, a government, or a political subdivision with interest coupons or registered form. This is all commercial terminologies under the Uniform Commercial Code. The two biggest privileges are Federal Reserve notes and government-owned vehicles, government-owned vehicle plates. And the privilege replacements are cryptocurrencies and private plates. I like the Texas place, can, they can be used anywhere because all states, Canada and Mexico included, are required to recognize Texas law. This chapter applies to a motor vehicle owned by the state or a political subdivision of the state. This chapter, so then this is the Certificate of Idle Title Act applies only to vehicles owned by the state. And the, uh, uh, this is Registration of Political Subdivision Prohibited, Texas Transportation Code. A political subdivision of the state may not require an owner of a motor vehicle to register the vehicle, pay a motor vehicle registration fee, or pay an occupation tax or license fee in connection with the motor vehicle. And under the Articles of Confederation, Article 4, Clause 3, and there's a similar clause in the U.S. Constitution, uh, the full faith and credit shall be given in each of these states to the records, acts, and judicial proceedings of the courts and magistrates of every other state. This is one of the plates that I have available. This is another one. This is one that I actually use these days. This is another one and another one. You can get one plate and one probable cause lamination for three each pieces of silver, one troy ounce each, or $50 in military script. Federal Reserve notes, fake money. Before you do this, you need to be prepared to defend it. But that is why I have the card in my car, because the discussion should end right there when I show them that nobody's required to register their vehicle. And then I start basically building a case against them. So you intend to subject me to the deprivation of my right to fail to give evidence against myself. Is that correct in violation of the Fifth Amendment? 
and you intend to subject me to the deprivation of my Fourth Amendment right to, uh, to be free from unreasonable search and seizures then, is that correct? And uh, um, my PayPal is engineerwin at yahoo.com and you can get Forbidden Zone laminated sheets from catman1 at gmail.com. And this is my probable cause laminated sheet. Now I'll pause it here briefly. If you want to um, um, pause it, turn it off and read all these sites, that's fine. I don't go through them anymore. Uh, it takes a lot of time. And, um, um, but, uh, but this is one of them. This is the other side of the same thing. And um, again, it goes through false arrest, uh, the, text, the penal code, and uh, the felonies that they're involved in. And um, so if a cop stopped me for speeding in Texas, I'd say I don't have a problem providing whatever you need, but I got a couple questions first. What's your probable cause for stopping me? And if he stopped me for speeding, he'll say that, uh, say that, and I'll say, well, speeding's a class C misdemeanor, and a class C misdemeanor is not a crime in Texas, and probable cause requires a crime. So I ask you again, what's your probable cause for stopping me, or should I just be on my way? Then I would dial 911 and tell them I need a county sheriff there because there's some official oppression going on. And then I'd be saying, so you intend to subject me to the deprivation of my right to own consumer goods instead of business equipment. Is that correct? And you and your boss here intend to conspire together to threaten me and intimidate me in the free exercise of my right to own consumer goods instead of business equipment. Is that correct? And, and just be going that way because most of them have body cams these days. And so you get it on the record, and then you get a recording from that body cam, and you can really uh, uh, do them. A uh, public servant commits an offense. This is abuse of official capacity. A public servant commits an offense if, with the intent to obtain a benefit or with intent to harm or defraud another. He intentionally or knowingly misuses government property, services, personnel, or any other thing of value belong to the government that has come into the public servant's custody or possession by virtue of the public servant's office or employment. And so when he turns on those emergency lights, when there's no crime, then he's abused his official capacity. Or if he uses his car when there's no crime, or he uses that police radio when there's no crime, that's all abuse of official capacity. And, uh, and, and they always like to use this uh, failure to identify a person commits an offense if he intentionally refuses to give his name, residence, address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person and requested the information. And um, so then, if, if they're going to arrest you, uh, if they have lawfully arrested you, there has to be a crime. If there's no crime, there's no lawful arrest. And so, so um, again, um, that's where you have to go with it. A public servant, uh, this is uh, official oppression, a public servant acting under color of his office or employment commits an offense if he intentionally subjects another to mistreatment or to arrest, detention, search, seizure, dispossession, assessment, or lien that he knows is unlawful, intentionally denies or impedes another in the exercise or enjoyment of any right, privilege, power, immunity, knowing his conduct is unlawful, or for purposes of this section, a public servant acts under color of his office or employment. If he acts or purports to act in official capacity or takes advantage of such actual or purported capacity. So if he, is, if he, if he assaults you when there's no crime, then that's official oppression. Um, and this is uh, Im impersonating. A person commits an offense if he impersonates a public servant with intent to induce another to submit to his pretended official authority or to re rely on his pretended official acts or knowingly purports to exercise any function of a public servant or a public office, including that of a judge in court, with the position or office through which he purports to exercise a function of a public servant or public office have no lawful existence under the constitutional laws of the state of the United States. And that's a felony of the third degree. If two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate, okay, so uh, if, uh, if there's, you get them out there and they're conspiring to injure, oppress, and uh, threaten, and intimidate you in the free exercise of your right to have consumer goods instead of business equipment, or uh, it, you see what I'm saying? Um, and so you could go after them here. And then this is 242, violating rights under color of law if there's no crime, who under, under color of any law, statute, ordinance, willfully subjects any inhabitant to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured or protected by the constitutional laws of the United States shall be fined during this title or imprisoned, not more than one year or both. 
and so if they're subjecting you to the right to uh, um, uh, deprivation your right to own consumer goods instead of business economy and uh, and then they're subjecting you to their satanic religious ceremony um, intentionally um, um, obstructs by threat or force uh, against religious real property any enjoyment and the enjoyment of that person's free exercise of religious beliefs um, shall be punished okay so they're subjecting you to their satanic religious ceremony and this is their good face so you gotta that's why you gotta get it on the record okay and so um, a good faith that's why you order their police reports you get it all in their words okay and 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 they give you lots of evidence against them a good faith reliance on the court warrant or order a grand jury subpoena a legislative authorization or a statutory authorization including a request of a governmental entity under section 2703 f of this title a request of an investigative or law enforcement under an officer under section 2518.7 of this title or a good faith determination that section 2511.3 this title permitted the conduct complained of is a complete defense in any civil or criminal action brought into this chapter or any other law. Um, and this is this is Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. No evidence obtained by any officer or other person in violation of any provisions of the constitutional laws of the state of Texas or the constitutional laws of the United States shall be admitted in evidence against the accused on the trial in any criminal case. And then then they go and, and screw it all up when they say, it is an exception to the provisions of subsection A of this article that the evidence was obtained by a pig acting in objective good faith reliance upon a warrant issued by a bought and paid for a whore based on probable cause. Government officials are, are required to know the law. Government officials are required to know that a warrant may not be issued. A capious may only be issued after they get jurisdiction and hold a trial and a conviction. Any denials of due process or bad behavior, and they always, always, always deny due process in countless ways. That's why I recommend you have one of my kangaroo court survival laminated sheets with you in their so-called court. And this is my kangaroo court survival uh, laminated sheet. I'll pause it there briefly. Um, I would suggest if you want to read those sites, just turn it off, uh, pause the video. And, and this is the other side of the sheet um, because uh, this will give you an idea. I mean, shoot, make your own if you want. But, um, but these are available. And, and this, is, this is why I was telling you that member way back when it talked about state of Texas, not the state of Texas. This is a Office of the Secretary of State certificate of fact. And let's get in a little bit closer here. It says here, it's, well, let's, first of all, it says there's no record of a, uh, this is the undersigned the Secretary of State of Texas hereby certifies that a diligent search of the records of this office were performed on the name the state of Texas. Under the Texas Constitution, it says that the Secretary of State has a seal, and the seal says the state of Texas. Notice the seal here. It says the state of Texas. That's the proper name. It is the state of Texas, okay? Anyways, the Secretary of State here has issued this certificate of fact the undersigned as Secretary of the State of Texas hereby certifies that a diligent search of the records of this office was performed on the name the State of Texas. It is further uh, certified that the search revealed the following. There is no record of a domestic corporation, professional corporation, professional association, limited partnership, limited liability partnership, or limited liability company by the name searched. There is no record of a foreign corporation, professional corporation, professional association, limited partnership, limited liability partnership, limited liability company, business trust, real estate investment trust, or other foreign file entity with a registration to transact business by the name searched. There is no record of an out-of-state financial institution registration by the name searched. There is no record to indicate that a designation of agent for service of process is on file for a Texas financial institution, unincorporated profit, a nonprofit association, or a defense-based development authority by the name searched. And then it goes on. However, the following entities with names similar to the name searched were found. State of Texas is an assumed name for Deer Park Cash Cow, LLC file number, 
and and so and this is certified by this Texas Secretary of State. So if they they go and assault you with their state of Texas, really what it is is Deer Park Cash Cow LLC. And here is a complaint that I went and brought it up in this Colville pigs, these Colville court, and notice how they changed it to the state of Texas. Now as they're calling it the state of Texas, but they still say it's state of Texas, and 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 they got this this court clerk that sits there, and this is a complaint. This is a complaint, if you can believe it. This is a complaint in the name by the authority of Deer Park Cash Cow. I, the undersigned affidavit, do here solemnly swear that I have good belief that I believe that 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 this firm uh, hereafter called defendant on or about uh, before making and filing this complaint within the territorial limits of the city of Colville did then and there unlawfully drive. But but she what she's saying is my belief is is based on information provided in a report given to me by Darren A. Smith, a pig in Colville. And so she's she's saying this is hearsay. This is not a valid complaint. She has no first hand knowledge of anything. This stupid bitch, and I'm going to have her for lunch. Anyways, you know, <laughs> I'm going to fix her wagon, I'll tell you. That's perjury of all. She has no first-hand knowledge of anything. When liberty and freedom at stake, your silence isn't golden, it's yellow. It's a malicious prosecution. The county attorney shall represent the state in all cases. That's the state, okay? So state of Texas doesn't have to have the county attorney. Although probable cause may not be inferred from malice, malice may be inferred from lack of probable cause. And they don't have probable cause for anything. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change we seek. Do not give them jurisdiction. Always make a special appearance. Point out their denials of due process. Do not allow them to enter a plea. It gives them jurisdiction. You're not entering a plea. I don't give you jurisdiction. You've already demonstrated you've prejudged this matter as a bought and paid for a clerk per the prosecutor. So we're impersonating a judge today, are we? Demand that it be dismissed immediately. Anyways, um, that's the end of that one. Remember, you got to tell them so you intend to perjure your rope. Make it questions all the time. They can't, they can't do anything about you uh, asking questions. So you intend to perjure your oath then, is that correct? I just want to get that on the record and make sure you get witnesses. The more witnesses you have, the better. I have a friend that comes to mind, and so on. That really helps when I have a witness. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Um, I've kind of had a little bit of a rant today, so I appreciate you watching and listening to my rant, And but I hope you get something out of it. We need to demand our Republican form of government. Have a great day.